page 76, Chopinicus, or however you say it, Mexican hand clapping song. At the top of the page, they're introducing you to the chords, the primary chords in the key of F major. Remember, F major has one flat, a B flat. Hopefully, you're doing the scale, the F major scale, one octave up and down. Well, the primary chords are the one, the four, and the five, seven chords. Those are the primary chords in any key, one, four, and five, seven. And it kind of looks ugly the way they have it presented at the top of the page. Let's let's skip the top of the page line. I'll explain that in a minute. Go to the middle of the page. This is where it's arranged for the left hand. You need to do this in both hands. But you have the one chord, which is an F chord. Both hands. And you have a four chord, which is a B flat chord. That's a mean sounding chord. B flat, oh my. Yeah, you'll get used to it. And then you have a C7 chord, which is the 5 7 chord. And those are the primary chords. They are used more than any of the other chords in regular music. Now, if you get into jazz and blues and all, you're using other scales and other chords. But I'm talking about regular classical music. These are the chords, primary chords. Or country music uses them too a lot. Now, as far as that mess across the top, they, they show this on each one of these things. And maybe I should explain this. I sort of explained it before, but let's just cover it. In a scale, and we'll go ahead and use F major since that's the scale. It's here, except you have a B flat, so it's here. That's, the, that's all the notes in the F major scale. Each note is numbered. We call them steps, step number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then the eighth is one again. That's why we can say a one chord or a four chord or whatever, it's the, a chord built on that step. So a one chord is built on step one, which is here. And you take every other note for a triad or three notes. It's a one chord. It's also an F chord because when you're in this arrangement, every other note, the bottom note, identifies the chord, so it's an F chord. Then a two chord, remember there's a B flat in F major. A three chord, four chord, that's the four chord they're talking about, except we put the F on the bottom, here. It doesn't change what the chord is, it's still a, a B flat chord or a four chord. Anyway, F chord, or four chord or B flat chord and then a C chord this is the five chord in F major three four five and all I do is add a seventh remember there's a B flat in F major so it's a five seven chord now the, the notes they're showing there is starting on a C Going way up with up into the stratosphere. Well, those are these notes. This is bass clef line they're showing. And normally we we don't use this arrangement. You can, but we don't. We we would put the E on the bottom. So I'm just going to take the C and put it on top in this arrangement. And we don't have to use all the notes. We can leave out the E, we can just use these notes. Or we can leave out the G and just use these notes. Or we can leave out both bottom notes and just use these notes. It's a 5-7 chord or, or a C7 chord. And that's what it, that's normally, the arrangement we'd normally use is leave out the G. So it's here, I'm gonna go down here, here, go down here. And that's what's in the middle of the page. It's a 5-7 chord in the key of F. It is a C7 chord in any key. Doesn't matter. But when you're referring to the numbers, that's in relation to whatever key you're in. Alright, that's my spiel on that. As far as this piece goes, this is a fun piece. Key of F major. All the B's are going to be B flat. Unless they have a natural sign, I don't know. Right hand, let's look at this. Three, four time, and we have staccatos all over the place. I suggest short staccatos here. 
Now because the left hand's doing staccatos too on some things, go ahead and use a wrist on both, it's easier. Just to just bump 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 bump. Watch the fingering going from the second measure to the third. Your second finger goes and plays the E. There's staccato, so you, it's easier to move around when you don't have to connect the notes. So here, and then you got to go up here. You got a quarter rest to move the hand up for the D C. Those are not staccatos, but they're accented, so give them a little extra. Oh. That's where the clapping comes in, a clap clap type thing. Mm -hmm. Then go back down for the last measure of the first line to the E, and you're in this position. Here, actually, you're in this position. And it's a. And then the f second line, the first measure, is, or the first ending, I should say, is here. And then move up for the clap, 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 clap. Then you're going to repeat that and do that first line again. And then you get to the second line, you have the second ending. Have we had first and second endings? I hope we have, because we got them now. <laughs> so then we do the second ending here. And then the, move the hand up for these. Clap, clap. Then at the top of page 77. They're saying 1-3 for the B flat D. I don't care for that. I, it, it moves the hand way up in here into the black key area and that's awkward. And I prefer not to do that if I don't have to. I will if I have to. For some people with fat fingers it doesn't work at all because then the middle finger won't fit. It, it's going, it, it'll hit multiple notes or whatever. So what you can do is go ahead and finger that 2-4 here. And we, it's contrast. We like contrast. I, I encourage contrast. I wish rock music today would use more contrast, but they don't seem to do much on it. So on page 76 it was staccato. Very, very separated, very bouncy. This is connected. This is all. It's all connected. And you can play this first line in this position using two, four, and five on these notes. You got them all covered. Dotted half notes, three counts. One, two, three. One, two, three. And then come down to here. Now it's one, three. One, two, three. Make sure your little finger goes up for the F. And now you can come down to one, three again. takes us down to the fourth line. The first ending, which is the whole line long. Hmm. Two, three, four. Use their fingering. You gotta be natural. And then... See the repeat sign? The only question is where you're repeating because remember the rule for repeat signs? You go back to the beginning and play it again? Well, that's not the whole rule, so let's review the rules for repeat signs. The idea is you will go back to a reverse repeat sign. A reverse repeat sign is a repeat sign that's pointing the other direction. And if you look at the top of page 77, you have a repeat sign pointing the other direction. That's a reverse. So the rule is you go back to the reverse repeat sign and play that part again. If there is no reverse repeat sign, then you go back to the beginning and play it all again. So for the bottom of page 76 we have that repeat sign there and the last, second line there. That We go back to the beginning because there is no reverse repeat sign in the way. But when we get to page 77 at, at the end of the fourth line on that repeat sign we just go back to the reverse repeat sign which is at the top of page 77 and we play page 77 that part again the first three lines. Of course, the, you don't play the fourth line again, that's the first ending. You play it once, you're done. You just do an ending one time, is, or if it's more, you know, one. So you skip that and you do the last line and play that one. Now the last two measures of that fourth line there. They're showing a five, because you're going to repeat back up to the top of the page. Well, if you're going to use one three at the top of the page, you can get away with that, because you're going from here to here. So um, wrist staccato, I can go from the C to here. That's fine. That's what you want to do. But if you're using two and four here, 
at the top of page 77, then I recommend you use a thumb on the C, not fifth finger. So it's here. Because then I'm in position to go back up and use two and four. Here. I'll leave that up to you which one you do. But I'm going to use two and four when in the play with me, so I'm going to use the thumb on that C. And we repeat back and do all that again. Now in the last line there, second ending, here, you're here. Now bring the thumb under. And for the last two chords, I recommend a 2-4 and a 1-5. Like so, you can do it their way. There's nothing wrong with it. But I believe 2-4 is a stronger fi uh, fingering that will serve you better in the long run if you get in the habit of doing that. Now for the left hand, the left hand has to stay soft. The left hand is accompanying here. At the beginning you have the one chord, wrist staccato, just hit it and then bounce off. But then when you get the accented notes, those are not staccatos, those are like the right hand, the clap clap. You're separating them, but giving a little extra. Yeah. And then now, then your 5-7 chord, first ending, then the accented. That's great. Now, go over to the last, the second ending there at the bottom of page 76. It's here. And then the here. Now, hopefully you can work that out. Nice and slow until it's kind of comfortable. Kind of. At the top of page 77, we get this four chord. It's a broken chord here. It's still a four chord. Second line, it's a one chord, broken chord. Third line, it's a five seven chord, broken chord. You see, there's all kinds of patterns to broken chords. A broken chord is anything that's not block. A block is when they're all at the same time. Anything else is broken and the Anything goes pretty much on it. Now as far as dynamic goes, it applies to the melody. It's the right hand. It starts out sort of loud. And remember to put in the natural accents. One, two, three, one, two. You feel them. One, two, three, one, two. And on these accented notes, those are loud. I don't know that you need a forte and an accent both because the accent is going to make it louder and there's not a lot of difference between a medium loud and a loud so in my opinion they could have left a medium loud and just add the accent and you'll get loud but they put loud in there okay that's fine and then each one of these clap clap is loud and then the the melody on page 76 is medium loud so it's a little under but when you get to the top of page 77, now the melody is loud. And the melody is the top note in the right hand. So if you can, bring it out. Otherwise, don't worry about it. But play the right hand louder than the left. See, they're accented. They don't need to be accented. It's loud. That's close enough. Second line is medium loud. You come down just a little bit. Third line's the same. And then in the first ending there at the, the bottom, toward the, the fourth line on page 77, the first ending, the last two measures, accented staccatos. Let the wrist collapse a little. Here, bump, 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 bump. You can do this, but with a loud, you need a little more arm action. If you're going to get the arm involved, make sure you collapse the wrist. Don't, don't play with a stiff wrist. And there's a crescendo there. So plan that out. You may have to start that with the F a little under, kind of down to a medium soft maybe, to give you more room to get louder. Because you don't want to be loud until the top of page 77 when you repeat. There. That's loud. So don't get loud too soon. Then in the last line, you get the same crescendo. Just go on up to a loud. However, you're from a... Again, I would suggest you come down from a medium loud, maybe a medium soft, so you got more room. And then loud and accented at the end. 
clap, clap. Now that's the piece. Now when you're learning it, you go really, really super slow. Right? And you do it one hand at a time and work them out and get the fingering and all. And then you put the hands together and you work it. There's no pedal, of course, because it's all bouncy and happy and fun. And pedal would smear that up. So let's try this together slowly just to check the notes and the rhythms. I'm not going to do the dynamics. You can do the dynamics. But I am going to do all the repeats and everything just like it shows. Three, four times, so I'll give us three counts. Go, go ahead and put your hands in F position to start. One, ready, go. Rest. Two, three. Rest. Two, three. Rest. Two, three. Second ending. Rest. Two, three. This is a fun piece. You can probably find recordings of it. I'll give you an idea of what it sounds like, in my opinion. It says moderately fast. You'll have to decide what that is. Don't get carried away with fast. It's not really fast. People are supposed to dance to it and you want to clap, clap when the time comes. So don't get carried away on that. It's something like this, I think. <laughs> 